Hello there, welcome back to the channel, where you can find me, RGB, the one and only, casting and delivering you some more Hamburger Sasu against Light. I am pretty excited about this one, and I hope you are as well, because these two players do deliver some really good quality one versus one content when they do meet up and decide to fight, to throw down their fists. Burger Sassy here on the bottom left of the map on the brown Protoss and on the Teal Zerk it is Light. Light is pretty damn good at pretty much every single race, or so I believe. Or so I believe. But at this point when this game was played, somewhere in 2019 May, he didn't have that much fastest experience yet, and I've somewhat learned that Zerk on fastest map is very, uh, very, uh, very different from Zerk on the normal maps. So does his normal map knowledge for Zerk translate to fastest map well, or does it not? He's not gonna go for a choke, he does not believe in frontal protection. He doesn't believe in protection, so he's just gonna leave the front door wide open and he's gonna invite Burger Sasu right in and he's telling him, You want a piece of me? Come and get it. So now a pool is on the way. Burger Sasu going for double the gateway. Might go for a third one and a fourth one, not quite sure. Not, not exactly sure what he's planning. But two gateways, that is for certain. Overlord for Light is gonna be a little bit late. I actually haven't seen this done that much. Hatchery pull hatchery before his second Overlord. It's now on the way. Now, this is a little bit interesting. Wonder if it's gonna work out. He's definitely trying something. Burger Sasu. Oh, oh, this is this is unlucky timing. <laughs> this is very unlucky timing. Burger Sasu was only scanning the ch uh, scouting the chokes. And if Light had just kept that Overlord here up on the high ground, Burger Sass would have just scouted the choke and moved on, and Light would be in secrecy. He would not be found, he would not be seen. Burger Sass would have no information, wouldn't know what to do, wouldn't know where Light is. It would have given Light more time to build up and prepare. But now he is going to be facing a wave of Zealots coming from across the map, ready to hunt him down and smack down and hit him right in the face. Is he going to be fine? Is he going to be okay? Well, I don't know. You just going to have to wait and see. Gonna have to wait and see what light is gonna do. Sunken number one, they're on the way. Do note, do note, all the drones are on the easy to attack side. If the drones were all on this part right there, the Zells would have to walk right in through this very narrow space to hit the drones. But now there's a wide open area here on the left side that Zells can kind of walk in from and hit the drones from. And I think that is what Burger Sasu is gonna try to do. If light doesn't kind of enclose this area by building a wall around it. Oh, Zergling there found Burger Sasu's space. Zealots are moving out, already on the way, coming from across the map, moving over to middle. Forge is on the way there from Hamburger. Hamburger is kind of doing a standard 3v3 public build order. Not something you often see in 1v1. Four gateways, four to gas. This is almost never, ever gonna happen in a 1v1. So now Light is somewhat protecting his drones a little bit better. Got about six, seven Zealots there on the way. Turns around there though, has to protect the probe because Light is trying to snipe the probe, but can't really get on it because Burgers has doing a good job of protecting it. Although now it, it's, oh, it goes down. He got it, but it cost him most of his Zerglings. Supply counts, it looks like a very big difference. Looks like a very, very big difference. But this is kind of normal. Four gateways, four Protoss gives you a lot of supply really quickly, a lot of Zealots. Zealots do very easily get on top of the Sunken, and this is somewhat of a small, a small problem. This is a pretty big problem for Light, because this Sunken is going to go down as well, and there are two more Sunkens morphing, but they might not morph in time. Because, ooh, yep, yeah, that one then down. Zerkings are on the sea now, though, but, oh, Sunken comes up. It's gonna get taken down as well very, very quickly. This game might be over. I mean, what Light is doing isn't bad. It's not bad. But 
it was kind of just the wrong thing to do into what Burger Sass was doing, and Burger Sass just kind of wound up having the better hand by pure chance. Sometimes you just gamble, and sometimes you gamble wrong, and the opponent has the perfect build order against what you're doing. Now Zillas are coming in, Zerkings are going for the surround, Sunkins are still morphing, but they're not finished yet, not even halfway done. Zerkings trying to do everything they can, but there's simply way too many Zealots, and this game is over. This game is over. It's done. Light. Turns out to just kind of draw on the short end of the stick, and Burger Sasu wins with a very simple 4 gateway Zelda production. He does have a Robo on the way there, in the middle, but he doesn't really need it. And Light has a lair finished up, but has to build more Sunkens, can't really do anything else, can't produce drones, it's just making Zerklings non-stop, trying to buy time for those Sunkens to finish up. But more Zealots are coming from across the map, and Light realizes that things didn't exactly go as planned. And that is an understatement. Things just went as wrong as they possibly could. But now we're gonna see Light play on Terran. In game number three, the score is now two wins for Burger Sasu, no wins for Light. We're gonna be looking at a Terran against Protoss, Light again uh, on his main race. His Terran is absolutely ridiculous. But the question again is gonna be how is his fastest map experience or his lack of fastest map experience going to translate to Terran on fastest map? The one thing I do know is that Terran on fastest map is very much like Terran on normal maps. It is actually, out of all the races there are, Terran is the most alike. So his knowledge from normal maps for Terran is most applicable to fastest compared to his knowledge about Protoss and Zerg. Protoss and Zerg are played completely differently on fastest than they are on normal maps. The power dynamic is different, the strategies are different, even the focus on which units you are primarily using is different. With Terran, it's all pretty much the same. The only difference being, on fastest map with Terran, you can reliably go for a lot of barracks and a lot of marines and medics, and be an overpowering force against Protoss, where on normal maps, you are kind of forced to just go for mech. You're kind of forced to go for tanks and vultures against a Protoss. You cannot really do much with bio unless you're going for a cheesy early game attack. A timing attack. And on the fastest map, you can kind of just do whatever the hell you want. You can play with a lot of marines and only a couple of tanks. You can play with a lot of raids and almost no tanks. You can play with a lot of tanks and vultures and no marines or raids. You can just kind of use every single unit you want to. So Burger Sass here on the brown protoss on the bottom corner. He is going for Nexus Forge, gonna go for a choke there as well. It's gonna be a pylon, the gateway there in the back. Whereas we'll just hover over to Light's base and Hotkey Light's base. Then we can hop hop back and forth between the two locations. Without too much interruption. We have the SUV there moving across the map. Went kind of an interesting pathway. Goes across the map. Lows over the middle, goes to the bottom, and he goes to number 3 spawn location on 3 o'clock. Sending out a marine there as well. He went for an 8 barracks supply build order. So 8 barracks, um, a barracks on 8 supply, then you get a supply depot on 9 supply, and another barracks there on 10 supply. Going for an early command center because he is not finding anything that can threaten him on the map. Also stopped producing marines for a little bit, so this is a little bit risky because there's of course the chance that Burger Sasu could be rushing without Light knowing. Because Light still hasn't found him, and likewise Burger Sasu has not found Light. So there's a little bit, again, a little bit of gambling involved on Light's part, but this time around it's going to work out just perfectly fine. Commands are there on the way, marines are back in production, academy there is being constructed. Whereas Burger Sass has got two cannons in the front, Cybercorder in the back, almost finished up, double assimilator finished up, six probes on the gas. He is going for advanced technology. And now the question is of course going to be, how is Light going to respond to a Protoss strategy in Protoss Terran on fastest map? What is Light going to do? Does he know the timings of, for example, the robotics, the Reaver shuttle? Does he know the timing of the Templar shuttle? 
Does he know the, temp the, the timing of the potential of Dark Templar? How is he going to respond to all of these things with his knowledge from the normal maps? Because as I said before, this is from the time period where Light, for the first time, started playing fastest map 1v1. He did become, as time went on in the coming months after this game, become one of the very best 1 versus 1 fastest players on the planet. Because that's just what happens when a professional player at the level of Light starts playing fastest map a whole lot they kind of automatically become one of the best players on the fastest map on the planet in a very short amount of time. So Marines there do meet a Zealot there halfway across the map. Zealot there doesn't want a piece of this, so returns back around, goes back home, where we have one Robotics on the way in the front, and a Templar's Archive on the way in the back. Light scanned the back, so he sees the Sill of a Dune, he sees the Templar's Archive, he sees the Triple Gateway there in the front as well. So he knows what light at uh, what burger sasu is building but does he know the adequate response to what he's doing that's the big question that i've posed before which we still need an answer to what is light gonna do we have triple factor here on the way one is finished up two more on the way got a star there on the way as well engineering bay there in the corner and a command center number three under construction we don't have turrets yet but we're still at the point in the game where a turret is not necessarily required yet He's building something all the way across the... Oh, he hunted down the probe or the zealot here on the across the map. So that was happening at the same time as well. Got Triple Dark Templar on the way. Light. I feel Light has an idea that Dark Templars are definitely an option. Or he's returning back home where a turret has been built in the front. He's going to build more bunkers there as well. And hopefully keep Burger Sasu out of his base. We've got a Wraith on the way to intercept and kill the Shuttle. The timing of that Wraith is very, very well timed. Because the Shuttle is finished up here in Burger Sasu space. Dark Templars are getting picked up. The Wraith is still about halfway through its production phase. So it might not finish before the Shuttle arrives here on the side of the base. But we at least have turrets and an engineering bay there on the high ground. So... The shuttle cannot go in over the southern side of line space. It has to fly all the way around towards the eastern side. Or we now have a wraith that's flying to intercept the shuttle. And he finds the shuttle. Now he just has to take it down with some micro and control. Marines are moving in between as well to turn the shuttle around. And the shuttle unloads two Dark Templars. And another Dark Templar dies as it doesn't get unloaded quick enough. So the Dark Templar attack to try and catch Light off guard doesn't work and Light has prepared himself really really particularly well in defending against that. Now also note Light only has a very small amount of Marines. He has had those two barracks there but he hasn't really built a lot. He's mostly been focusing on just moving into factories really quickly and a starport to build rates and get maybe cloak you got tanks rolling up to the backside there, bunker in the back as well to help protect against the drops. So Light believes his micro is going to be so good that he doesn't really need a lot of marine to defend. He just has to get rates. He has to keep on scanning on to see what Burger Sasu is doing because information, of course, is going to be key in defending against what Burger Sasu is doing here. Burger Sasu has got some dragoons there to move to the sides. Probably going to put them on the sides to make sure that the engineering bay is not going to move too far away from the hill to give light more vision. But probably also to do damage to the rates in case the rates are once again planning on hunting down the shuttle. The raid though is hanging all the way over here. So even though he's trying and doing a very good anti wraith movement by putting Dragoons on the side, the wraith is actually right next to his base waiting for the shuttle to leave. So it's going to be a little bit of a surprise for Light there, for Burger Sasu there. The Wraith is already right here. It's only a single one. He didn't build another one. He's instead focusing on making Goliaths with Goliath range to take down those shells with target firing. I think this is a little bit less reliable because rates are way faster. You can move them places way quicker and more easily. But the Goliaths do a lot of damage against air units, and they do have a lot of range. He's going to split those uh, Goliaths up on the southern side 
and the eastern side. He put some marines on the high ground to extend his vision. That's something I've seen Mong do, but apparently Light is the first player to ever do it. I've never seen anyone else put marines on the high ground with a dropship to get vision on the high ground. So even if the barracks just get forced away, there's still marines on the high ground providing vision. Also a tank on the high ground for defensive purposes. Burger Sasu going for a very big drop. He's got five shuttles there, finished up. Now waiting for Reavers, Templars, Zealots to pick them all up and fly them across the map and go straight for Light's economy. Now Light does have a Marine here on the top right corner to send his SCVs to, just in case a big drop is gonna be coming for his money to try and steal it all. Light is gonna try to prevent it by running away. That's the best thing you can do. A robber comes up to you, don't give them the money. Just run away as fast as you can in the case they have a knife. Never fight against someone who has a knife. Because you're going to get hurt. And when they have a gun, they're going to get hurt as well. So just try to run away. Best thing you can do, don't fight, run. Run like the wind. And that's Light's plan. He's not going to fight back. No, he's going to run away as fast as he can. When the drop, they're going to be coming to steal his money. So loading up there in the front, Templar sells a lot. A lot of units there. A lot of Corsairs as well. He built the Corsairs mainly to fight against the raids and to escort those shuttles in and he finds the raid there but it's only one shuttle get, that gets exposed the other five shuttles are already on the other side of the map on um, this 12 o'clock spawn location ready to fly in from the right so light might be expecting a drop from the south because that is where he saw the shuttle come from it's actually coming from the north, although he notices he's attacking with the Goliaths, but there's five shuttles. He cannot take them all down. Now the SVs are running away to safety. Tanks are sieging up. How much is gonna allow? We've got four Dragoons. Okay, okay. Only four Dragoons. We're on the bottom side. He tried to go in as well, but once again, can't go in much deeper. So the drop there. Light. Prepared well. Responded particularly well. Responded particularly well. So doesn't really lose anything. And now, because his supply is on 170, he might actually be planning to attack and move out. And Burger Sasu here does have... What? Okay, so I missed him picking up an SCV with a Dark Archon right here on the bottom left corner. I was distracted with the drop on the top, but he used that drop to distract and pick up an SCV at the same time and get a Dark Archon Mind Control. And now he's building a command center here in the back. And Light isn't planning on giving Burger Sasu the time to build a Protoss army. But the question is going to be, can Burger Sasu defend himself against Light's attack? Or is Light going to run him over and win the game quickly? Because we're only 11 and a half minutes in. Level 1 attack on the tanks finished up. Level 1 armor on the way. Level 2 attack almost finished up. Also do note, Burger Sasu 92 probes. Which means his army is going to be pretty small. Whereas Light is 73 SCVs. His army is going to be a little bit bigger. Defensive medics there on the tank in the front. Got vultures there as well. Got tanks up on the high ground. Light is playing his run very, very smart. This is a great setup. There's not much Burger Sasu can do against this attack. I mean, he's got a lot of gateways. He's got almost a maxed out army. But those tanks on the high ground are going to be party poopers. They're going to make this a very difficult thing to fight back against. And life's production is pretty on point. Coming across the map with even more units. Some cells there being put up on the high ground. Got to clear out those tanks as fast as he can. Because those tanks are... In that position, the tanks absolutely dominate the fight. But life's production here, as I said before, is on point. Zettles are spawning though and pushing back against the Goliaths and tanks. The tanks and Goliaths are getting micro. The Goliaths have level... The Zealots have level 1, 1, 1 upgrade, so the upgrades are pretty damn good there for Burger Sasu. But a little bit better for Light, and tanks are sieging up there in the front. There's only two tanks. Vultures are placing mines, Goliaths are just in the front tanking and providing support for the tanks. More tanks rolling from across the map. How many factories does he have? Wow, wow, he's building a lot of factories. I think that's about 16, 20, 20 factories or so. Yeah, 20 factories this early into the game. This is going to be a brutal push, a brutal punish for Burger Sasu's audacity to focus on a mind control game when he should be focusing on a game to kill Light. And he didn't try to kill Light. So Burger Sasu went for the wrong choice here. He's getting 
punished for it. He's getting spanked really early hard. He's trying to build a proxy gateway base here on the side, but that might not really work out because the push is already in the middle of his base. He's getting closer and closer to the Proxter in the back. And Burgersaz's supply is plummeting down into the dumps. It's plummeting into a deep ravine and he's never going to get out of it because pylons are going down, gateways are going down, he simply cannot produce anything at all. I think Alight has done it. You cannot underestimate a professional Terran when they're playing Terran on fastest map because this is what's going to happen. This is what happens. A Terran is just going to run you over with both their fingers in their nose, feet on the keyboard. They're not even using their hands anymore. He's just playing with his feet. He's controlling the mouse with his feet, he's spamming his ankle on the keyboard, and things just magically go right because he knows exactly what he is doing and completely obliterates Burger Sasu within 14 minutes and gets himself one win in his best of set so far. So one win for the light and two wins for the burger. I'm gonna go to game number four where I think Light is going on the Protoss and Burger Sass was going on the Terran. So a little switcheroo between these two players. Light wants a taste of what a Protoss has to do to defeat a Terran. And he's going to find himself with a very tough and difficult opponent because Burger Sass is a master of Terran against Protoss on the fastest map. This is going to be brutal, but I'm really curious. I'm really curious to see what Light is going to do. Because a little known fact that most players probably don't really know is that in the year 2019, Light was unsatisfied with his Terran performance in professional competition. He wasn't feeling it. He wasn't happy with it. So what he tried was he switched over to Protoss in February of 2019 and prepared and trained Protoss for the coming ASL competition. But he didn't qualify for that competition because 4GG, another Terran professional, knocked him out. But Light played Terran for three whole, uh, Protoss for three whole months on the normal maps. Trained, prepared, he just did everything in his power to become a master of Protoss and he honestly was really good. He honestly reached a very high Protoss level. He even beat players such as Flash, Last, Larva, uh, Queen, Best, Shuttle. He beat all the top pros with his own Protoss. So his Protoss is really, really good. He just didn't manage to qualify because his opponent just outperformed him in that one qualification match for the ASL. So light here on the Protoss. We've seen his Protoss in game number one and it was Kind of impressive, but the one thing he failed to do was keep on building a bigger base and get more probes. He just ran out of money and couldn't keep up with Burger Sasu's production because Burger Sasu had about 24 hatcheries and Light had 10 gateways, 5 robotics, and 5 stargates. You simply cannot keep up with that Zerg production. The question now is going to be is his Protoss against Terran, is he going to run into the same issues? where he will not have enough production, will not have enough money against Burger Sasu's Terran. Because Burger Sasu knows exactly how many factories he needs. He knows exactly how many SUVs he needs. Light might not yet be at that point where he knows the exact amount of required workers on a fastest map. But his raw skill and knowledge as a professional player might actually just be enough to beat Burger Sasu in this matchup. So, double gateway, double zealot, nexus, a forge, and a gas there on the bottom side. Burger Sasu gets into the base and scouts everything. Light has not yet gotten into Burger Sasu's base, so he's got... Doesn't have the same information Burger Sasu has on him. But he's balling up zealot in the front slowly, and he's going to try to push his way through. Kill those marines and get into the backside on those SCVs at some point, or at least to gather information. So he goes in, gets on top of the marines, gonna try to micro his way forward, but Burger Sasu micros backwards, doesn't make a mistake. And Light feels that he can't go for it yet, he needs more zealots. Also a cannon on the way there in the front, two cannons in fact. Cybercore there on the way in the back, mining from a single gas, SV there running in circles, 
both players on similar amounts of workers. Double Gaster on the way for Burger Sasu, one is finished up. No Academy there yet, getting command center number two. Marines in the front are slowly balling up into a pretty impressive group of Marines. But without Medic and without Stim, they're actually not that much of a threat against these Zealots. The Zealots move forward, kill three Marines, lose one Zealot, but then feels forced to pull back. So he actually does get quite a good amount of kills for what it cost him. One Zealot, three Marines. It's actually a pretty good trade. Zealots return. The Zealots have, H have a, a regenerative function on their shields. So as long as the only the shields go down on the Zealots, you can kind of just retreat, pull back, restore the shields, and go back in again a little bit later. And the Zealots wouldn't have gotten much weaker. Citadel of Aduna on the way there in the back. Ooh, no Robo on the way as if he is still alive running in circles. Light has gotten a second gas, now getting a third one as well. It's on 27 probes. Burgess has still on 21 SCVs. Factory there on the way in the front and the engineering bay there as well. Because Burger Sass, who saw the Citadel of a Dune before he saw the robotics. And that of course means Light is gonna go for Dark Templars, or maybe even for regular Templars. It's kind of uncertain at this point. The amount of Marines has grown significantly, uh, just enough to push those Zelts back to their own base. Burgess House got medics on the way and Stim as well, but Light goes for the turnaround, and now we've got a little switcheroo where Burgess House, who might have to retreat back to his own base because the amount of zealots there getting on top of his Marines is pretty significant. So just a little bit of back and forth rope pulling. Burgess House, who pushes, Light retreats, and then we get a little turnaround. Light pushes, Burgess House retreats, but Light is going to keep on pushing harder and harder. Wants to get into the Ghost Street Choke, gets on top of the Marines. Marines are getting micro backwards. Medic has arrived on the scene, but it's healing the wrong Marine. This is a really good push here from Light. This is a really good push. It prevents the construction of a turret in the front, which is very important. Because you've got Dark Templars on the way, and a High Templar as well. But the Dark Templars are not going to finish soon enough. So I guess the Dark Templar sneak through, through the front door, is not going to work. Do we have robotics? No robotics yet. Light is going for Templar Storm, Zealot Speed, level 1 attack, and Dragoon Range. He cancelled the Dark Templars. So after Light realized he couldn't prevent the construction of a turret in the front, he cancelled the Dark Templars and queued up two High Templars instead. He's got a robot on the way there, somewhere in his base. Not exactly sure where it is. It's somewhere, that's for sure. Oh, right here, in the front. Two temples have finished up. He might try to just break through the front. Once his level 1 attack finishes, and once the Templars arrive right around here. Got a tank drop going across the map. Light doesn't know it's coming. And doesn't have a lot of... Cannons in the back to protect. A scan comes down from Burger Sasu. Burger Sasu turns around, he doesn't believe... Oh, he wants to go the other way around, but by doing so, he exposes the fact he's got a dropship on the way. So now Light might have seen it, or he might have missed it. I don't see a response from Light while he's building pylons on the middle. Probably going to be gateways on the middle as well. So yeah, Light missed the fact that a dropship flew by over the middle, and now his probes are unstacked and going to get shut down from 52 to 26 to 23. So he lost more than 30. He lost 35. So well, that is a painful hit, but now he goes in for the attack. Tries to break through the bunker wall. They're in the front. Templars are behind the bunker wall. A lot of Marines there already went down. Zealots are just mowing through the competition. But it's not enough. So instead of focusing on the bunkers in the front, he's just going to walk right through. Going to try to put the Archon on the tank. Tank there survives. More results are in the back, killing Marines. Zealots are doing a lot of work in the back. The Marines, though, have a Medic and have Stim, so the Zealots do get taken down, and now Light is in a pretty bad situation, where he's got 27 probes against 43 SCVs, and he doesn't really have much of an army. So that caught Light by surprise. He does have the cannons to protect himself, but because Burgos has to scan, 
the Nexus area, he saw that there were no cannons here on the right side, and that there were some cannons here on the left side. So he just flew around and went in for the tank drop from the bottom left, bottom right, sorry for the correction, and killed a whole lot of probes. Which of course means that he's gonna try again. He's gonna try again. Why just do it once when you can do it twice? Why just go for a single punch when you can go for a double tap? Make sure to double tap. It's one of those things I learned from a zombie movie. Make sure to double tap. Okay, so let's just hotkey this area. Oh wait. Goes in. Tangrop is coming in. Light is pulling his probes to save. He's pulling them towards the tanks, but still loses about four or five or six. Kills the tanks. Now back on 34 SC uh, probes. 34 probes. Got it right there in the air. Pretty strong bunk wall there in the front. Burgess has now 55 SCDs. Went for seven barracks. That's a lot of barracks. A very strong and heavy marine defense. Level one attack there has finished up for the marines. Level one armor is on the way. Whereas Light is getting level two attack there for his gateway units. Level one attack has finished up. Gonna move across the map and try to push and break through the front door. Which actually comes at a very convenient time. Oh, this is very convenient for light. Intercepts drops up on the middle. Now there's no tank in the front, so he could actually try to kill those supply depots. Finds a raid, the raid can take it out as well. But instead of going for the frontal push, wants to secure the area around Burger Sasha's base, but it just so happens there is nothing to secure. There's nothing to kill, nothing to do. So he might instead now... I honestly don't really know what he's gonna do. There's a shuttle coming across the map, there's a Dragoon inside. He's gonna put those Dragoons on the high ground, isn't he? Unloads on the high ground. Dragoon starts attacking the turrets. He's gonna put more Dragoons there up on the high ground. This is kind of interesting that the high ground abuse doesn't often happen. The shuttle stays alive, but he can't afford to go back in because sending it back in within turret range would immediately kill the shuttle, which would of course kill the Dragoons as well. He's back on 44 probes against 70 SCVs, double army there on the side coming up, getting more factories as well. Rikasazu is exploding with production, exploding with money. He's too damn rich, drop comes in, oh it's again. Dragoon's being put up on the high ground to kill those turrets, so he's going for two directions at the same time. He's forced to use tanks. They're on the sides to kill Dragoons, but this side here is going to go down while he's taking care of the left side. And now, Burr Light, is he going to go for a frontal attack? There's actually no tanks in the front. They all have been moved to the side, and most of the others are still under production, although two tanks just finished up and arrived in the front. Light gonna try to break through the front. There's a lot of bunkers there. Zealot's running right through, right on top of those tanks. Gonna try to kill everything they can. One tank goes down. Tank number two there stays alive for a little bit too long. So the one tank in the back still alive is gonna change the fate of the game. Marines coming from the back, moving to the front. There's no drop coming into the backside there though. So Light tries to break through the front door. Can't quite get through. Another wave of units are coming in. He has something inside the shuttle, but the shuttle gets taken down. Templar unloads just in time. Both Templars unload, in fact. Storms on the tanks. Tanks are going to get taken down there by the double storm. Beautifully done. It's time for the Marines as well. Dragoons in the front, although... The Dragoons in the front there, though, do get taken down by the Bunkers. Bunkers with range. Marines level 1 armor, level 1 attack. Pretty damn strong, beefy Marines. He lifted up the engineering base, so we're not going to get level 2 attack or level 2 armor. He's instead relying entirely on a future of mech production. Light on 44 probes isn't making any more probes. So this really goes to show Light just doesn't know how many probes he needs on the fastest map. But the drop there comes in. It's unloading, arriving and getting closer. It's mostly and largely zealous just there to clear up and open up a path. Killing turrets, killing tanks, killing SCPs, killing marines. Just letting those zealous do whatever they please and then hopefully going right back in over this top right opening. A lot of shield there coming over the bottom left, goes in. There's a lot of turrets are in between, those dragoons on the high ground. Light is doing interesting stuff. He's doing interesting stuff, but 
so far nothing has really struck me as being a decisive blow that could win in the game but he's improvising and finding ways of doing things and keeping up the pressure with small attacks or that one big attack there on the choke but hasn't really found a way to really get in there to really get under burger sazu's skin Though a drop there, arrives, gonna fly right in. Burgers has not responding. Templars are reloading. Templar gonna storm on the SCDs. Does he get any kills? He gets, he gets 25 kills, so that is a pretty good drop. But he's still in the 60 SCDs in total. Got five command centers, so those SCDs are gonna be back on the minerals very, very soon. But a hit is a hit, and a hit is what matters. I just wish Light had more probes. 44 is not gonna cut it. It's got nine probes on the gas, so it could at most be 40, 35 probes on the minerals, which is not enough. It's simply not enough. Comes in with the shuttle drop there over the right side. Both shuttles get sniped out of the air by the Marines. Quick response there from Burger Sasu. The front door here has been refortified with more bunkers and engineering bay and even more tanks sieged up behind the bunkers. Is he gonna break through? I don't know. I'm not certain of it. Unloads some cells there behind the bunker line. Unloads a Templar as well. Storms on the tanks. Tanks taking some heavy damage. There's another Templar on the scene. Ready to storm on wherever he can. Wounds are breaking through. More Templars are arriving. They are storming on the vultures and the tanks. Tanks do get taken down by the storm. And he's broken through. Light has broken through. He's inside the base. He's in. Oh, that one Archon morphing is actually fucking him up. The one Archon morphing won't let his dragoons walk through. But he. Finally finishes up the Archon, gets through, Zealot's getting on top of the tanks, Templar arriving, getting close to the SCDs, both of the Templars get sniped down by stimmed Marines, target fired, beautifully done. Prevents disastrous loss of SCD lives by responding very, very quickly. So Light, despite only having 44 probes, is doing some real damage against, against Burger Sasu. But the only problem at the moment is... Well, is there a problem? I mean, there is no problem for Light, there's a big problem for Burger Sasu. He's getting ran over by a frontal gateway mass attack on only 44 probes, and Light is somehow making it work. Or is he? Templar arrives on the scene, Templar storms, Templar hits a lot of... Oh! Oh! Down to 22 SCVs. Light is doing it with a small, tiny economy, but with really good execution and micro, great targeting and multi multitasking. Light is gonna... I thought Light didn't have it in him. I thought Light wasn't gonna succeed. I was skeptical. I was very, very skeptical, but this just goes to show that pro micro and pro multitasking and attention to detail really just makes the difference. Burger Sass is getting blown up. And even though Light is having trouble remaxing instantly, he is bigger than Burger Sasu. He's got double the supply, Zealots are still running back and forth, killing whatever they can, wreaking havoc, and just forcing Burgess Hansen to focus on things he doesn't want to focus on. He's got no money, 20 SCVs, now 22, on the minerals, getting healed up by a medic. He's bowling a front door of mines, but there are observers here in the air. Short Dragoon's gonna walk forward, kill the mines, there's two tanks in the back, a couple more there behind those tanks, but five tanks is not gonna cut it my friend because we got shuttles coming in loading right on top of the tanks and dragging some mines into the tanks and whatever they can the tanks do stay alive there the 102 tanks go down and now the dragoons are streaming in through the front door spreading out getting on top of everything mowing it all down no unit is safe think of the children please think of the children he's mowing everything down everything is getting torn apart Burkasasu calls GG and Light finds himself with a win number two Two wins in a row against our Burger Bro, and Light is feeling on top of the world because he is beating a fastest Gosu at his own game, while himself having pretty much no experience on fastest map 1v1. You could see it. You could see that he wasn't. He was just winging it. He was just improvising on the spot, not sure what to do, but found a way. Like he slowly found a way and figured out. As long as I rely on what I know from the normal maps and from my professional experience, I might be able to break this turtle shell and get right 
in the middle and punch hard in the gut. And he succeeded. So both players here picked random. And Burgersasu said he got Protoss. And Light said he got Zerg. So both players, random, but they do disclose the crucial information that was a secret up until they disclosed it. Which race they're playing. So this time around, what is Light going to do? Is he going to do Hatchery, pull Hatchery before Overlord again? Or is he going to try something else? Because do note, Light is relying on his professional experience on the normal maps, but not on his experience with fastest maps, because he barely has any. So this is going to be interesting to see what is Light going to do. Hatchery first. That is, of course, a standard thing that everyone does. Although the location of the hatchery kind of depends, sometimes in the front for a choke, sometimes in the back for no choke. Little Burgersasu goes for a Nexus first. He doesn't want to go for four gateways again, like he did previously, and it worked like a charm. And we have Light again, going for pool before the Overlord, but he also goes for a gas before the Overlord, and now we got an Overlord on the way. So he might go for a cheesy move and try to catch Burger Sasu off guard. Is he gonna go for Zerklings really quickly, give them some speed, and turn them into Cracklings? They're gonna try to run Burger Sasu over. Is that what he's gonna try to do? This is actually more a 2v2, 3v3 Zerk build order that you often see the professional do on fastest map or the very advanced high level Gosu fastest players in team play. They go for Hatchery, Pool, Gas, Overlord, and then Zergling Speed. And then, of course, Hatchery number three. So this is going to be interesting. Is this going to work or is it going to fail? What I'm looking at right now for Burger Sasu is he has no forge yet, but it's on the way, so a cannon will soon be constructed. Gateways have finished up, so Zealots are now in production as well. Nexus is finished up, but do note, because the Nexus is placed directly against the other Nexus, Zerklings can kind of just go right in between, right here. You can put Zerklings right here, and nothing except range units can attack the Zerklings. But a cannon is on the way for Burger Sasu. And Light has not yet found Burger Sasu, and Light is actually assuming Light is on the top corner, which is not where he is at. Light assumed wrong, and his chance of getting here in time to kill the cannon is completely gone. Light might be in some trouble, because more waves of Zells are going to be finishing up for Burger Sasu, whereas Light still does not know where Burger Sasu is on the map. Oh boy, so even, even professional players who are world champions make these kinds of mistakes of assuming too much without the actual information to base their assumption on. And he finds him, but he realizes there's a cannon in the back. There are zealots there as well. well this is not going to cut it. This is not going to work. So here back at home, he starts building more hatcheries. And he's going to rely on those Zerklings to keep him alive against the Zealots. But there are quite a lot of Zealots here for Burgersasu. He's already on 26 probes, got a Cyber Core on the way, and is mining from one Assimilator. And cannon number 2 is on the way. Also getting more pylons as well. Zerklings are coming in from the top side there though. He's going to try to get on top of something and achieve something. Or maybe he's going to dance in the front to make sure the Zealots are not going to leave. Yep, those zealots are not gonna leave. For now, Burger Sasu's got house arrest. Also, that is what Light tried to achieve, but there are simply too many zealots. Is he gonna go for it? Still some zealots are in the back, ready to protect the cannons. Goes for the cyber core, but the cyber core is under cannon protection. So now a Citadel of Adun is on the way, level 1 attack, they're on the forge. Zealots are moving across the map, ready to strike at the heart of Light's economy. But he sees the Zerglings. There's a little bit of a dance back and forth. 
Light is waiting for the Zealots to go in too far. But more Zootrakens are on the way there for Light. Light is got a Hydalisk then finished up, but doesn't really have the supply and space to build a lot of Hydalisks. So he's getting some Sunkens instead, and more Zootrakens are spawning as well. Gotta buy time for the Sunken to finish up. He's waiting, biding his time. Burger Sasu just wants to strike. He wants to get here in time before Light becomes too big. Light is on 16 drones against 39 probes. Burger Sasu gets on top of the Sunkens, but now Zergens come from every single direction. Get the surround on those Zealots, but the Zealots have a pretty good spot to fight from. But the numbers are too great for Burger Sasu to fight into. Kills a lot of Zerklings. But we still have about 30 Zerklings alive and ready and well and healthy to fight. So he goes across the map, gonna try to go for a counterattack. Got some Zelda there in the front. Gonna try to buy some time for cannons. No cannons in the back. He's waiting for another wave of Zealous to spawn. Level 1 attack is close to finishing up. Zealous speed is on the way and so is the Goon range. Great micro on display here from Light. Trying to kill as many Zealots as he can, but there's so many Zealots. On Burger Sasu, that no, that is not gonna succeed. But now he's on 23 drones. Hydalisks are on the way. He's on five hatcheries in total. Burger Sasu's got a pretty significant lead, if you ask me. But I've seen players make a comeback from worse than this. But level one attack and Zelda speed are gonna change the game. He's got 10 gateways in total, 51 probes. Getting another row of pylons, so he, he will be maxing out at about 8 minutes into the game on pure zealot production. Whereas Light, though, is kind of in a position where he can only produce Hydalisks and nothing else because he has to keep up with what Burger Sasu is doing. With Burger Sasu, he's got a big army entering the middle, ready to strike where it counts and matters most the economy. It's always the economy. Every single damn time. So he splits up his zealots. He's gonna go for a surround attack there. Light has a really good position behind the hatcheries. Gonna be a little bit difficult for the zealots to get right on top there, but the amount of zealots is so damn high. It's so damn high. He's gonna just push through, brute force it. This is just pure muscle power. Beefy arm zealots have been training their entire life, lifting weights in the gym for this one moment. To overpower them Zerg Hydalisks with them beefy biceps and triceps. Mm. Muscle boys on the scene with their side blades, more coming in. And Dragoons with their beefy legs, crawling forward, wiggle waggle. Wiggly waggly. Moving forward, getting on top of everything. Linus microing his heart out. But he simply was not prepared for what Burger Sasu had in store for him. Which is some beefy boys from a gateway warped in for one single purpose. To bring the darkness. And Burger Sasu won. Light loses, calls GG, and that is the set. Just goes to show that a pro player can achieve a lot with pure knowledge. But when it comes to Zerk, you probably do need to play a couple of fastest games before you're ready to face off against these fastest Gosus who have thousands of 1v1 fastest games. Thousands. Maybe even tens of thousands. I don't know the numbers, but a lot of games under their belt. Great games there though from Light. Game number 1, 2, 3, 4 were nice to watch. Versasu. He's got a little bit too much muscle on those arms for light to be boxing with. Hope you enjoyed the games. I did. And I do hope to see you return sometime. Someday, when I return, you and I together, we're going to enjoy more fastest in the future.